What's up guys, I'm Prawl Checks here with my second story time video. Got something really special for y'all today. This is about the time I went to jail and how I nearly died. Now, before I get into this story, I just want to say I have my new Blue Snowball mic and I absolutely love it. I really hope y'all notice that the sound just sounds so much better. I did some messing around with it. I've literally had it about an hour and I just absolutely love it. It just looks amazing sitting here on my desk and... I really hope this really improves my channel on the sound quality because I know sound quality is really, really important. Anyway, guys, let's get into the story. All right, so this happened back when I was 13, about three and a half years ago because I'm nearly 17 now. But what happened was I was at a friend's house and so much stuff had to go right for me to be in this position, right? So, because I was begging my mother that day to let me stay at my friend, friend Braxton's house. I'll mention his name, doesn't really matter anymore. But... She she finally let me go, and that night, it was about 2, uh, maybe 1 o'clock in the morning, and we was both just laying there. He was on one couch, I was laying on the other couch, and we both been sitting there waiting for like 30 or 40 minutes. We're like, you want to play the game? No, do you want to play the game? Literally, was back and forth. The game was sitting there. It was playing like Call of Duty Ghost or something, and he's both just sitting there waiting for one of us to start a game, and neither one of us would play. So, we was probably just about to go to sleep, right? And... Yeah. He gets the bright idea, hey man, you want to do some prank calls? I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. I was retarded back then. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's just do it. I was so excited about it because I thought it'd be fun and stuff, right? So we found some numbers and stuff, right? We prank call a few people in like stores, Walmart or whatever. Well, he gets the bright idea. I just wanted to be like, call some Walmarts and stuff and or whatever and people in like stores and stuff. He gets the bright idea, call the cops, right? And, you know, let's just report murders all over to this great state of Alabama. Well, to say the least, we were young and stupid, or a lot younger and stupider. And, yes, I know stupider's not a word. But, anyway, what happened was, we, we called, like, five or six police stations. Most of them were in Alabama. Some of them were in, like, Tennessee, other parts of, of the, the great U.S., right? So... Oh, let me tell you how we got this idea first. Because we knew, like, back when we were, like, 11 or 12, we knew that there was this number, like, the San Diego Police Department or something. They, If you call them and ask if this is the Krusty Krab, they get so pissed and start screaming. That's why we started the idea to call the police station and see if we could start that and do it. Because we did that to a, f a few of them, and then he got the idea to call and report murders. <laughs> but anyway, this happened, and we called, like, five or six of them and reported them. And one of them started calling back a bunch, and we didn't know that to use star six seven or to use a spoof number at the time. And what happened was that they started calling, and they traced the number to where we was. Well, about two hours later, about six or seven cop cars we were, surround we the were, house, we were, and the we were, uh, yeah, the sheriff of where we live at the time. I'm not gonna disclose that information where we live pulled up around the house and was walking around the house and later we found out why he backed down the street because we thought they left we knew they were out there but we were terrified and didn't want to go outside what happened was that we like learned about two or three weeks later in the newspaper that he heard a shotgun being cocked and that that's why they had like seven or eight cop cars from like three or four counties around surrounding the house they were gonna call the SWAT team and throw in uh, tear gas or something if we didn't come out Bro, at that time, we were asleep because we thought they had left and everything. And his uncle answers the door and they literally, like, tackle him and drag him out the house. And, like, they searched the house and they found us. One of our friends, it wasn't just me and my friend Braxton, they was this other kid named Caleb. Yeah, his name was Caleb. He was completely oblivious as to what was going on. He had been asleep the entire night. Oh, man, I felt so bad for him. He had no idea what was going on. But, anyway, we had to go to jail, and we stayed there for like three days, I think, and it was like five o'clock in the morning, bro, I know all those cops were mad, and I wish I could just go back to apologize to all of them, because I know it was like really, really early in the morning, we had them all thinking, like, up in SWAT gear, bro, they came in that house with like M16s, and oh my, it was terrifying. 
Oh, but what happened though? We they took us to jail, and I actually got out of my handcuffs. They, he asked me if they were too tight, and I'm like, nah. And he loosened them up a little bit, and while we were sitting there, like sitting on this metal slab, like concrete slab, while as they were getting mine and Braxton's papers together, Braxton accidentally tightened his up, and it was cutting the circulation off in his hand. But we sat there for about an hour, an hour and a half, and we thought that they were just gonna leave us there, and then our parents were gonna come get us, and we was gonna get in trouble and stuff, right? No, they took us to juvie. Over to a jail, bruh. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I was terrified. And anyway, we weren't allowed to be, like, in, like see each other at all or anything. And I had to go down to Shelby County and in Walker County and, like, some other place. I had court dates everywhere, bruh. I didn't get anything down in Shelby County. In Walker County, I got a year of probation. But I got off in, like, what was it, like eight months, eight or nine months, I think, because of like good behavior and my parole officer. He was retiring. He had just got back surgery. He said he was going to retire, so he just let me off early. So he, I think he was a really nice guy. I cannot remember his name, though. But yeah, he was a really nice guy, and hold up. My dog's barking. But anyway, yeah, but I got a year of probation from him, and he, he pulled some strings, though, and got me off of boot camp. I would have had six weeks of boot camp, but he talked to the judge, and my lawyer at the time, and they all decided that it's like all I had was a year of probation. But if I got any trouble or broke parole at all, I'd have six weeks of boot camp. Braxton, on the other hand, only had six months of parole, but he did not parole, yeah, probation. He had six months probation, and he did have to go to boot camp. And I felt really bad for that because I kind of felt like it was my fault. And a lot of other stuff that happened that following that throughout the years, the last two or three years, I felt that a lot of it was my fault that happened. Even though I do kind of blame it on him. That night was definitely his fault. I blame it on him entirely. He blames it on me. But anyway, bruh, they came up in that house with M16. They were ready to shoot us. Bruh, I realize now how lucky I was. And I wish I could just go back and change all that in that day. Anyway, guys, that was the story about how I nearly went to jail and nearly got shot. And anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you love it, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.